fake it till I make it, there was no honking in the videos that you supplied, and this witness gets called out that Uber Eats was operating, when she specifically said they weren't. Here's the clip. Good morning. My name is Brendan Miller. I'm counsel for Freedom Corp. I've been asked to make sure that we introduce ourselves before we start. I, I just have a few questions for you, and just so you know, uh, most of these are what we call brown and done questions. I just need to give them to you so that there's some other evidence down the road, and I need to be fair to you, so I need to put a lot of this to you, okay? Just to, just to be clear, yeah. brown and done is simply that yeah, they okay. put a statement to you that uh, it, it may be contradicted later, so you should have a chance to... Thank you. To yeah. Thank you for that clarification. So, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm too lawyer. I was trying to fake it till I made it on that one, so. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's good. You did a very good job. You sold me. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, so, I understand that after the protests, uh, there was two funds set up, uh, one being $20 million was set aside by the federal government to compensate Ottawa businesses affected by the protests and another one for $10 million uh, from the provincial government. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Right. And to date, or at least as of June, um, I understand that of the federal government funds, only $8.6 million have been used. Is I, that fair? I don't have that knowledge. I know a lot of my businesses took advantage of it. I can't comment on the total, but I could state that the majority of my main street business, my main, uh, uh, my storefront businesses did apply to the fund. Okay. And of the $10 million uh, provided by the province, I can't find if uh, much of that was used. Can you tell us, uh, do you know any amounts uh, with respect to the amount of money that was used from the provincial funds? No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you had said in your evidence, um, ma'am, uh, that uh, Uber Eats wasn't available uh, during the protests. I I'm going to put it to you that it was. Okay. I Can you, I I'm giving you an opportunity. <laughs> I'm not sure. That's the purpose of this. So right. I, I want to be fair to you. Um, I'm going to put it to you that Uber Eats, in fact, was operating during the protest and was, in fact, even delivering then to the protesters. I would say there are likely times that Uber Eats uh, was operating and other times on the weekends, which I would I think our businesses would deem to be the most busy times where a lot of them weren't. Um, there was a lack of drivers. I know that was a major issue. And then because of the closures there, you know, there was zero access for it. So whether the app was open or not, um, I'm not aware, but I can tell you that many of our restaurants um, in Vanier and others could not use that service okay. as a method to sell their food. Yeah. And, they, and for, sorry, further to that, some would make the orders and they wouldn't be picked up. So there was an additional loss. Okay. And uh, did you yourself experience any inability to use Uber Eats? I did not use yeah. Uber Eats in that time, no. Right. Uh, did y either of you... Uh, have contact with the uh, member of parliament Mona Forche uh, during this time that she I believe is yes the she's of the, the MP that represents Vanier so I do yeah. okay yep. and I take it that um, when you contacted her uh, at one juncture you asked her to uh, help you with respect to removing police blockades that were affecting uh, the uh, uh, market and your area is that fair I did not no that was not my request. Now, that may have been my colleague in the market, but it was not me. And in the videos uh, my friends from the commission played for you, uh, those videos taken by you, uh, you would agree that there was no honking or noise in the background in those videos, was there? Uh, in some there were, not in those particular videos, but at times there was honking. There wasn't as much honking at Coventry, no. Yeah. Yeah. And what time I saw all the videos that was roughly was 6 p.m. Roughly 6 p.m. So well, the first weekend that was roughly 6 p.m. On the second weekend, it was 9 a.m. in the morning. OK, so it depends. I was there at different times. Right. But you agree in both those videos, there's no loud noises. There's no honking while you're driving and taking those videos. Uh, there was honking. Yes, there was definitely honking. There was some loud noises, whether they were as loud as downtown. No, they were not. Okay. But there was definitely honking, and depending at times, too. Also, um, yeah, no, there was not. Right. And were you aware that on January 25th, 2022, uh, the city of Ottawa received an email uh, from the Hotel Association here in town 
stating that the truckers and protesters had booked stays for over 30 days. Um, I was not aware of the email, but I do know that Steve Ball from the Hotel Association was on many of our calls, especially in the third and fourth weekend and near the tail end of them. And he did make that aware to us. He also pointed out to the fact that there was a lot of hotels that couldn't be accounted for because they would be booked through third party. Right. So the hotels.coms or things so, like that. So can, is it fair to say that to your knowledge that the municipality of the city of Ottawa knew on January 25th, 2022, that these protesters and truckers were intending to stay a lot longer than the weekend. It, it appears to me that they should have known that, yes. Right. And you had mentioned that you saw some folks uh, pouring out urine and other fecal matter or what have you. Just urine. Yes, okay. And what date was that, do you recall? Um, the the date is on the video. I believe it was the second weekend, possibly the third weekend. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I do, I, it's on the video, but... But it wasn't at the beginning? It was not at the beginning, no. Okay. Were you aware that uh, the protesters uh, and the truckers had applied for and had been given permits for porta-potties originally, but those permits were then pulled? I'm not aware of that, no. But I kind of happy to hear that at some point something was permitted, yes. Well, that was <laughs> the beginning, um, at the beginning. And I just, again, trying to be fair to you. Thank you. And you had mentioned that you had seen uh, or heard from some uh, store owner that they had sold out of knives and bear spray, is that right? Of the Canadian Tire, yes. That's okay. what it was told to me. Um, is it fair to say, though, that you never saw any protesters or truckers running around waving knives? Uh, m most of the people I know that hunt with knives don't wave them around. Right, good. I so like they them. would be concealed, perhaps. But I, don't, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't think waving around a knife states whether or not the knife exists. All right. Did I see the knife being waved around? No, I did not. All right. And you never Do I trust that the Canadian Tire is telling me the truth? Yes. Right. So and you never saw protesters with bear spray? Uh, I was not in the heat of it on the last weekend, if that's what you're implying, no. And despite that Canadian Tire had sold out of these items, you had no knowledge of who they sold all of these items to, is that fair? I had none, no. So you don't know if you sold them to protesters or if they sold them to local residents, would that be fair? I, I suppose that would be fair, yes. I mean, I suppose we could probably cross-reference credit cards at some point and figure that out, but... I don't think that that credit cards. Is the case. Well, well, I don't know. I purchases. think uh, the feds will need to get another order for production uh, for all that. Likely, way above my pay grade, sir. Way above mine too. Thank you. Um, so I believe those are all my questions for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.